Typical, typical Gamora today of a camel. Regular, uh, regular political back and forth. Uh, what's interesting though is um, it's short, but it's it's I wouldn't say it's the easiest Gamora. We continue from yesterday. Yesterday we we're talking about Ula. Ula said lots of stuff, and uh, we begin with one of the things that Ula said. The Omer Ula, Omer Belazar. We're on the bottom last the last uh, Ula statement on the bottom of Yud Aleph on base eleven B. So Amr Ula Amr Belazar, Helchasa Gavim in Havadim. Okay, it's a very vague statement. You collect from slaves. What exactly does that mean? So. What does it mean you collect? In general, when we talk about collecting from a debt, we typically refer to property. And perhaps this means that slaves are like property. Okay, so Amr Rav Nachman Ulos. Rav Nachman says to Ula, remember that Rav Nachman is, is the leader of the court. So he says to Ula, hold on a second. <laughs> When you quote Rebbe Lozer, Om Rebbe Lozer, Miyasme, did Rebbe Lozer say even from even from um, the, the from the inheritors? So let's let's explain this for a moment. I think I pointed this out a few days ago and pointed out many many times in the past. The general rule is that the estate is liable to pay back debt of the of the father, and this is true primarily of debt that's in a document, what we call a milva b'shtar. A milva is a loan, a shtar is a document. So the documented loan, uh, the, the the estate has to pay back. Now, what what responsibility does does the estate have to pay back the debt? So the principal responsibility is only on real estate, property. If the estate has property, then the estate. We're on the bottom of Yudalaf and Bays. We're beginning the Gemara with Omer Ula. Um. If the estate has property, so then that property is indebted to, 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 to the debt. However, with regard, if the if the estate has does not have re real estate, they only have movable assets. Those movable assets are not responsible. The 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 the, the, um, the kids are not are not responsible to pay back the debt. To pay back. The debt from those assets, and obviously the question is, what is the story of a slave? Is a slave like property, or is a or is a slave like a movable object? Now, I should note, like I've noted in the in the past, that this is very theoretical. And the reason for this is because the uh, this is Rabbeinu Gershom. No, it's I believe is a cherem of the Goenim. I think it precedes Rabbeinu Gershom. Uh, it's about when you talk about about twelve hundred years ago, the Goenim ruled that. All the assets of the deceased are responsible to pay back the debt, even movable objects. So this halach is no longer relevant because everything, every movable object from the deceased, deceased person is, is responsible to pay back his debt. I have a friend of mine, I have a friend of mine said, said he sadly lost his father-in-law. Anyway, uh his his mother-in-law said that his father his father-in-law promised not to leave them behind with anything to fight over. He said that each of you take a, take a credit card bill and pay it off, and that's your inheritance. <laughs> anyway, yeah. So Amr Belazar, let me ask me. So he wants to know: Did, did Rabbi Lazar say again? This is before the Gainim. So before the Gainim, you need to pay back only real estate, which is 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 a property that's available to collect the debt from. So he so Rav Nachman says, is, is this also from the inheritors or not? So he says, Lai mine, only from him, from the debtor himself. The debtor himself, you can collect, you can collect slaves. Sigmar so asks, Mine from the debtor, I feel Maglima Dal When you collect from a debtor, you can collect from the coat that he's wearing. You know, if a guy owes you money, he doesn't have anything to pay, you take it, take off his coat and uh mm -hmm. and uh, leave him, you know, leave him out in the cold. Sigmar says, Okay, what we're referring to is an apaitiki. What is an apaitiki? Apaitehekoi. Apaitiki. Okay, well, we'll explain. The Kidarova, like the opinion of Rav, is Omarova. Also, apaitiki. If he makes a slave an apaitiki. By the way, apaitiki is a word you have to remember for the next like three, three mesechtas. It comes up very often. If he makes a slave an apaitiki, what does that mean? That means apaitiki is a, is a um, I don't know how to say it in English. Where you take a bunch of words and you sort of compact it. Um, uh, it's like an earcon. 
would be a good word. Of, it's an air conditioner. Compound word. It's a compound, compound. word, but, but you don't say the whole word. You just say a, a you just say a fraction of the yeah. syllable. Yeah. Uh, no, I mean, yeah. What? This TV is the first letter of each word. Um, <coughs> so this is a, okay. this is basically the Aramaic word in Hebrew that's loya hela kapiroin elamizu. Um, this is this is the place where you can collect your debt. In other words, the guy likes the slave. He decides, okay, you know what? This is the slave I want to collect my debt from. Okay, but what happened? Umochre, and then the guy sold the slave. So they agreed that the slave whose name is Tuvi, let's say, you know, Tuvi is a big slave, slave from the Lil. Tuvi the slave is is who I, is who I want to collect if you don't pay me back. And what did the guy do? He went ahead and sold Tuvi. Umochre, but the the uh, uh, the the creditor can go ahead and collect that slave Tuvi, even though he sold. However, let's say he said, sure, Apatiki, the guy had a big ox, a big bull, and he wanted the bull. So he said, this is, I'm going to collect my debt from the bull. Umochre, and then he sells the bull. The, the creditor cannot collect the bull. My time, and what's the difference? Very simple. Pious, they call up, the whole less they call up. Uh, um, in in uh, the, the, um, the slave, when you sell, when, when you, when you sell a slave, and when there's a when there's a debt that the clear as a slave as the primary source of repayment in case of the, the guy doesn't pay, so then there's the, the rumor mill starts working. There's a lot of rumors, there's a lot of talk in town, and therefore it's fear to say whoever bought it probably heard the rumors. However, with regard to an ox, this isn't the case, and therefore you do not collect an ox that was sold, even if it was made as an apotiki. Okay. The boss of the nafik. After Rav Nachman left, so again, so Ula says you collect the the um you collect a slave. Rav Nachman asks Ula, even from even from the inheritors, so Ula says no, 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 only from the guy himself. And the difference is in Apatiki, where you where you, where you specified you want to collect from this slave. However, after Rav Nachman left, Amr Lehula Ahachin Amr Belazar Afilu Miyasmi. Ula says, no, no, no. Rabbi said, even from the inherit, even from the inheritors, you always play the slave. Um, Rav Nachman, so Rav Nachman heard about this. He said, in Ula. Ula sort of slipped away. He knew I was going to ask him questions. He didn't want to answer. So he, he didn't tell me the full story. But uh, Rav Nachman was not impressed. Okay. Have Ovda ben Ardoi. There was a story like this in the town of Ardoi. And the inheritance and the Dayan of Nahardoi collected. Have over the Pompadisa, there was a story like this in Pompadisa, the Agve Rav Chana Bar Bizna. And Rav Chana Bar Bizna collected from, uh, also from the inheritors, he collected. Um, he collected the. Um, uh, he, collected a, he collected a slave. Okay, anyway, Rav Nachman heard about the story. And Rav Nachman says, no, you have no right to collect from a inheritor, a slave. And the critical feature, like we said, is that is the question, what exactly is the status of a slave? Is a slave considered like property or considered like a movable object? If it's considered like property, then the then the inheritors have a responsibility to use him to pay the debts, use the slave. If not, if it's treated like movable property, then they're not responsible to pay the debt with his with his value. So Abu Rav Nachman, so Rav Nachman says to Rav Chana Barbizna, you you pass you, your halacha was incorrect. Zilu ahaduru, go and return, go and and return it. In other words, the, the inheritors are not responsible to pay for paying the debt with the slave. Go make sure they get the slave back. The Eli, and if you don't, I'm going to confiscate your palace. So Abu Rav so Rav says to Rav Nachman, one second. Ha'ula horrible as the yoni did not hardoiv. Rav Chana Barbizna. We have four opinions here. We have Ula Rabbi Lazar, the, the judges of Nahardoi, and of Chana Rabbizna, that all are ruling uh, that that you that you do not collect from a slave in the, in the pre sorry one second that you do collect from a slave uh, uh, from the from the inheritors. Um, man commands man commands like who do you hold like? 
So Amalei Yisrael Nachman responds, "Ano masin siyadana." I have a bris. Tony Avimi, Avimi taught, "Prusbul chal al karka ve'ene chal al ha'avodim." We spoke about a prusbul vaguely, a prusbul very, very briefly. A prusbul is a document that allows you to collect your debts after shmita, and the methodology of that is that it transfers your debt to a court, and a court is, does not have the obligation. The, the court is allowed to collect money after shmita. An individual that's terrorist is like you guys. You're not allowed. To, you're not allowed to collect. A court is allowed to collect. Okay. Um, okay. Now, one of the conditions to a principle is that you can only write a principle on if you have property. There's property to collect from. There's an interesting Tysus. Tysus, I believe, in Gittin says that it could be that we all have property because every Jew has a certain amount of property in Israel, right? Because at some Back through the generations, he's entitled to some amount of property. So Tesis says that everyone has dollarimas in Eretz Yisrael, four four cubits in Eretz Yisrael. So that's that's enough. That's where I planted my tree. Yeah. <laughs> that was easy. Um, okay, so he says prusbul chal karka ve'en works for property, not for slaves. If you have a slave, you still can't write a prusbul. Metal la niknim ma karka ve'en a niknim im Okay. Okay, and now we get into another complicated area, which is where we're headed to now, which is Kenyan Agav. We spoke about Kenyan Agav uh, approximately two months ago in, in Masechus Kedushin, is Daf, the Chof, Zayin, Chavov, Chavzayin, somewhere around there. And what is Kenyan Agav? Kenyan Agav is, sorry, the way we explained it was, let's say you buy a house and you buy it furnished. So when you, when you, close, on, when you close on the house, you own the furnishings. Now, certain furnishings you obviously own. For example, like a built-in light fixture, obviously is part of the house. So is a toilet, right? Mm-hmm. Maybe the oven, if it's built-in, is also included. Maybe even if it isn't built-in, it's included because it's sort of normally sold with the house. Maybe the washing machine is in the same category. The couch is certainly not like that. Mm-hmm. It, it, not a built-in couch. A movable couch or a recliner, it's not, it's, not, it's not included in the house. But if you agree to buy the furniture of the house, you, sometimes you'll buy furnished houses, so then when you close the deal, you own the furniture. The way you acquire, how did you acquire it? Through the house, you acquire the furniture. Okay. <clears throat> this is called Kinyanaga. Now, the opposite is not true. Let's say I buy the house, but instead of acquiring the house, which typically is done by walking around the uh, perimeter, it's one of the ways to do it. You can also change the lock. That, that also works. Um you you instead you acquire the 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 um the recliner that's in the house. <laughs> By acquiring the recliner, you don't acquire the house. Make sense? Mm-hmm. Okay. So metatla nicknam makarka, the the movable items, the recliner is acquired with the house. The ain't a in Bavada. However, if you if you buy a slave with a recliner, right? Mm-hmm. And you or let's say well, yeah, yeah, okay, it's a good example for now. We'll, we'll soon we'll switch the scenario. Soon we'll have we'll buy we'll be buying a slave together with a uh, expensive coat, and he's actually wearing the coat. But but for now, you bought a slave with a recliner. You acquire the slave. You don't acquire the recliner. Okay, lay katanoi. It's a complicated brisa. Let's say it's 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 a machlekes tanam. So let's see the brisa. It will take some time to flush out all the details. He was selling the guy slaves and property. He acquires a slave. He doesn't doesn't does not acquire the property. Similarly, if he acquires the property, he doesn't acquire the slave. Property and movable items. If he acquires if he acquires the property, so then he acquires the 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 uh, the movable items, the recliner. In the Tatlan, if he acquires a recliner, like on a comic, he does not acquire the property. Avodim metalplan, slaves and movable items. Hechsik avodim like on a metalplan, metalplan like on avodim. Either if you pick up the Evid or if you pick up the slave, you acquire the slave. The 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 um the movable items, neither one acquires each other. Okay. Now this seems to now this seems to imply that a slave is like a movable item. You pick up one movable item, you don't necessarily acquire the next one. Mm-hmm. If you pick up a recliner, it doesn't mean you acquire a chair. It's two separate things. There is a minor problem with that opinion, which is that the Bryce clearly specifies that if you have a property and you acquire the property, 
you don't acquire the slave. And obviously, if a slave is like a movable item, like the Tomplin, why not? Why wouldn't you acquire the slave? We'll get to it. We'll get to it. Okay. The second price is very clear. You pick up Evan, you acquire the metallic You acquire the slave, you get the armchair. My law, it must be this is a debate. The Marisov, our one opinion, says that slaves are like property. Clearly, the second price that says acquiring the slave allows you to acquire metallic movable items clearly indicates that a slave is like property. And the first price it seems to indicate a slave is not like a property, is not like property. So um, okay, so um, Ravikram, and, and this would this would seem to be the debate between Rav Nachman and Ula. Right? Rav Nachman says the slave is not like property, and therefore you cannot collect from inheritors. A slave cannot be collected from inheritors. Ula, on the other hand, together with Rabaloza, Rav Khanabar Bizna, and the rabbis of Nahardoi. They're, they're all of the opinion that says that a slave is like property, and therefore you could collect a slave from the inheritors. <clears throat> yeah, no problem. Oh, so property property here means very strictly real estate. I see. Okay. Yeah, yeah. We'll soon see that maybe even if it is like real estate, it could be there's two types of real estate. There's fixed real estate and non-fixed real estate. How odd is that, right? What makes it real? It's movable. In other words, you could have even if you treat him like property, he's he, he doesn't have the same status as property because he's it's not fixed. Slave is not fixed. He can move around. Okay. So oh, okay. So now it seems that this the, 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 this machlekes is, is is the same machlekes as Rav Nachman against Uba. So Amar Vika Brader of Ami Rav says no. Everyone holds like that slaves like property. But Vahadatanya Kana Shabir, according to the Bryce that says that if it's property, Kenyan Agav works, meaning you can acquire the slave and the armchair. The armchair is acquired Agav the slave through the slave. By picking up the slave, by, by acquiring the slave, you acquire the armchair. Like every property. So that makes sense. Vahadatanya Laikana, according to the opinion that says you don't acquire it, why not? The Enon Karaka Dumi de Orim Mitsuris be Yehuda de you need property similar to the fortified cities of Yehuda that don't move. We'll explain. It's now we learned. Nechasim she'et, this is the mission in Kedushan that we saw. Yeah, it's Kedushan of Chavav. Nechasim she'en l'ham achrayas, niknim in the nechasim she'yesh l'ham achrayas. Property without responsibility. That's a fancy way of saying the top one. Movable items. What's, what's, what's the fancy way of saying? Whatever. Movable items. Non, Non-real estate. Is acquired with real estate in the Chosim Shiyesh Lamachrayis with property that does have responsibility with real estate. And how is and how do you acquire real estate? The Kesef Shtar B'Chazaka with money a document or Chazaka. Okay. Chazaka is is a walking around the perimeter or is a changing the locks, taking taking control. That's the key idea of Chazaka. There are multiple methods to do it. So changing the locks is one example of taking control of the property. Immediately, how do we know that this this concept called Kenyan Agav that if I buy a house, I I and I agree to buy the furniture, I bought I bought the furniture inside too. By acquiring the house, I acquire the furniture. How do we know that that's true? Amar Chizki, the Amar Kra, the first states, Their father gave them tremendous amounts of gifts. There was silver, there was gold, and there was uh, delicacies. Im together with Are Mitsuris Yehuda, fortified cities in Judea. Okay, clearly the, the indication here is that the king and the acquisition was through, in other words, he gave the he gave them the large cities and they own the gold and the silver and the delicacies that are in the cities. Just like those fortified cities are not movable. So too, in order for property to, to be a vehicle of Kenyan Agav, it has to be a vehicle that doesn't move. Right? It's strictly a financial instrument. It's not a movable vehicle. In other words, the 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 um there is the fundamental difference between slaves and property and real estate, even if slaves are treated like property, like real estate. Okay, that's the first version of the Gemara. We have a different version now in the Gemara. Ikad Amri, Amravika Bradyarvidi, Ravika here goes the other direction. So in other words, in the first res in the first version of the Gemara, what are we saying? 
everybody agrees that slaves are like property. The only difference, with the, what the debate is, what's the laws of Kenyan Agav? Is Kenyan Agav limited to fixed property and not movable property, or does Kenyan Agav encompass all types of property? That would include slaves as well. In the second version would go the other direction. The Kula Alma Adi Kimitalkum Dami. Everybody holds that a slave is like a movable item and therefore is not an eligible candidate for Kenyan Agav. The Tanya like on us, so the opinion that says that you can, it does not work for Kenyan Agav, that makes sense. Shopper. Hadi Tanya cut. Kenyan Agav. Agav is, Agav literally means as an aside. <laughs> That's what it, literally the word Agav means as an aside, by the way. The Kenyan, the acquisition called Agav means that by when you acquire property, like we explained before, you if you buy a house, right? So you own the house, you own all, all, all the fixed the fixed furnishings, the furnishings, the so built. Can't be moved or taken out without damage. They call the built-ins, and even moreover, certain things that are customary to be built in, even if technically speaking you can move them, like a washing machine, for example. What? I believe it's typical. Typically, when you sell, if if, if that's the, if that's typical, if that's typical, I think it is the case. And when you sell a house, you typically include the washing machine and the refrigerator is included, even though technically speaking, you can move them. We'd have to ask Keith for yeah, <laughs> yeah. Uh, even though technically you can move them, you, they're, you know they're sort of built in. Okay. okay, but certain things are not included. Like for example, if there was a dining room table with chairs, it's not included in the sale. Let's say you agree to buy the dining room table and chairs. You don't need to actually pick up the table. By acquiring the house, you acquire the dining room table and chairs also. Soon we'll see, not only that, the dining room table and chairs don't have to be in the house. <laughs> if they were in the in the carpenter shop for repair, it's that, that's fine too. So I could sell you my house together with my car that's on the dealer box. It doesn't have to be on the property. Okay. So okay, so that's the first version again. The first version is the debate about Kinyanagov. And everybody holds that slaves are like property. The second version is the opposite. The second version is that everybody holds that slaves are not like property. It's not like real estate. It's like movable items. <laughs> so according to what's that? If it's like a movable item, so it's understandable why Kenyan Agav does not work. So then why would Kenyan Agav work? Oh, talking about where he's buying this expensive coat together with the slave. And the slave is wearing the expensive coat. Rabbi, yes. Still on twelve A. We're three. Uh, one second. We're now two lines above the wider lines. Bechi Aidan. Aidan is the first word we're on. Bechi Aidan Olav. My Havel. Okay. One second. Let's say he's wearing the coat. Who cares? My Havel. Chotzer Mahalachasi. The Chotzer Mahalachas Leikano. If he's even if he's holding wearing the coat, but this guy is not secure, right? As you might expect. A person, he could just walk out on the street tomorrow or today or right now and, and just give the coat to somebody else. In order for the, the coat to be acquired by him, it has to be called Kim Chotzer. You own the slave, therefore what's in the slave's domain is yours. But the problem is your domain... Okay, let, me, let me explain this to you. Okay. Let's say, for example, you have a backyard, okay? And it does not have a fence. And it has there's a sheep, a sheep that's straight, a wild sheep that strays into your property. Do you acquire the sheep? No. no, because there's nothing, there's no security. There's no there's no way the sheep is secure in your property. So so uh if you have a sheep there, it's not your sheep because the sheep is still ownerless. The fact that it's standing in your property at this moment makes no difference. Let's say on the other hand, you do have a fence around the property, the type of fence that would secure a sheep. Then then if a sheep walks in somehow and then the door closes, so now the sheep is sort of secured indefinitely. And yes, you do acquire the sheep. Hmm. In the same property, let's say a bird swoops down. You acquire the birds? No, why not? It's not because for the bird, it's not a secure property. So now when you have a slave, is he secured? No. He can do whatever he wants. And do you have handcuffs on him? If you don't have handcuffs on him, then you know, and the feet locks. What do they call it? The uh, chains. The chains. What was that? Shackles. Shackles. If he's not shackled, then he can do whatever he wants. He can walk on the streets. He might not. He might not actually do it. But that's not the point. There is no Kenyan chotzer here. The Kenyan we're talking about here is not agav. It's chotzer. Agav is through the slave you acquire the item. Now we're saying no, no, no. Because you own the slave, and now the slave is your property. 
So anything that's in his property is in your property. Just like if it's in your, your, your backyard, it's in, it's you can, can acquire it. But that only that can only works if it's secured and the slave is not secured. And if you tell me, oh, in a second, he's not a moving chotzer, he's a standing chotzer, because now he's standing still. Because if he was moving, he wouldn't acquire it. So if he's standing, he doesn't acquire it either. So what's the resolution? Indeed, he is shackled. Right? So if he's shackled with his with his fancy coat, well, he can't exactly take off the coat. And if that's the case, then uh, you acquire the coat with the slave. Okay. Vatanyo, the Bryce says, Hirsik the power got kona vodam. One second. Okay, so Gemara says, Vatanya Hirsik Hirsik the Karaka. One second. If he if he acquires the property, he acquires the slaves. <clears throat> one second. Okay. And in one in one price it says that you do acquire the slave, and one price it says you don't. In other words, by acquiring the property, do you acquire the slave or not? So Gemara says, when you when do you acquire the slave? When the slave is standing inside the property, that's when you acquire the slave by acquiring the property. But if the slave is not standing in the property, then you can't. So it says the Gemara says the high the high loy kana kishain kishain ayin demesayichel when it's not when he's not standing in the property. Okay, fine. Hani chalach nishna the omer of ikka breder brederav ami avdikum talgadam. This makes sense if we say that a slave is like property. If a slave is like pro, I'm sorry. If a slave is like a movable item. The slave is like a movable item, so he's an eligible candidate for what we call Kenyanagav. Just like if you acquire a house, you acquire a, a, you, you, you acquire the recliner. So too, if you acquire the house, you also acquire the slave. Except that if the slave is not standing in the house, then you don't acquire the slave. That all makes sense. However, if you say Abdikimikarkoidami, he's like he's like property. El Elahlishna, third to bottom line. Okay, so now we go back to go back to another Gemara we learned in, I think it was both in Masechta's Kedushin and it was also in oh, some also in Basra. Okay, basically the Gemara, Gemara's son Kedushin is, let's say a guy buys, let's say I buy from you 10 different properties scattered in 10 different cities around Oregon. Remember this Gemara? So what happens if I acquire one of them? I acquire all of them. So one second, if that's the case, then if I acquire one property, who cares where the slave is? If a slave is property, by acquiring his by acquiring my friend's house, I acquire all his slaves, no matter where they are. Because just like when you acquire one property, you acquire you can acquire all 10 at once. So why can I get all 10 slaves too? Why do they have to be on the property? Second to bottom line, I sold 10 fields in 10 different countries. By acquiring one, I get all of them. So the Mara says, oh, hold on. Are you taking this question a little, little too far? Okay, well, well, the question is not just according to the opinion. This is, in other words, this question I just asked you is according to the opinion that says that a slave is like property. So the question is, it's like 10 different properties. So just like I can I acquire one, I get 10 properties. I acquire one property, I should have to get the slave, even if he's not present on the property. But the same question is also true on the flip side. Let's say you say a slave is like movable objects. Okay. The halacha is that a move, like I told you before, if I sell you a house, okay, and the dining room table is in the carpenter shop, and I include it in the sale, by you acquiring the house, you get the dining room table too, even though it's not on the property. So why exactly does a slave have to be on the property? The halacha is that for King and Agav to work, it does not have to be in the same, it does not have to be that the, the movable items are on top of the physical property. Does there have to be a statement or something that the property is part of the house? So, so it has to be understood that the house, that the, um, the dining room table is included in the house. 
in, in the sale of the house. Yeah. The law says it doesn't have to be in the house, it could be in the carpenter shop. What, what must you say? It must be that there's a difference, be, in other words, there's a difference between movable, movable items and, and movable items that don't typically move on their own, right? A slave is, slave is, is a mobile, right? He can, he can get around. And therefore, the truth of the matter is that when you acquire property, you typically can acquire a a a a, a, a non real estate item wherever it may be. The exception of that is a, a non real estate item that's mobile that goes around on its own, like a slave. He he has to be present on the property for the Kenyan to work. How about a robot? <laughs> the, the, the Roomba, the Roomba, the Roomba. <laughs> right? Um, so Hachanami, so if that's the case, shining But similarly, the same thing would be true with regard to acquiring ten properties in ten countries. There's a difference between real estate that's fixed and real estate that's mobile. A slave is a movable real estate. You know, it sounds very odd. I thought the real part of real estate was that it was it was real. Anyway. That's a big yeah. So he's a, so he's a real estate that moves, and therefore the key reason why you can acquire one property in ten countries and you acquire all ten is is um is because the base of the land is one. Sort of the land has one fundamental uh, bedrock. However, obviously the slave doesn't share the bedrock. At least you hope, right? Okay. <laughs> okay, fine. So that's that. That's the final. That's the final resolution. The debate in the Brisa is either a debate about Kenyan Agav or a debate about um. Uh, one second. One second. No, that's, uh, um, either this either the debate in the Brisa about about a slave is either whether Kenyan Agav works even though it's property. Or the debate is whether we treat a movable, a, a mobile movable object differently than a regular movable object. Okay, now, and we have a debate here between Rav Nachman against uh, Ula, Rav Khan of Bizna, the Dayanam of Nahardoy and Rav Lozar, whether or not we treat a slave like movable <laughs> item or like property. Okay. Next, so the, the mission have pointed out that in order for you to to uh, in order for you to pay for damages, it has to be nechosim she'ain behen meila, property that does not have the concept of meila. Okay, so so here is here is another uh, compl <laughs> complicated gemara. When we talk about items that are sanctified, most of them have meila as well. So you have a sanctified object. And if you use it inappropriately, you use it for your own benefit, not for what it's supposed to be used for, mm -hmm. then you you violate the, the, the biblical injunction of me'ilah. Mm -hmm. There's a penalty. You have to bring a sacrifice and you have to pay back whatever you used plus a fifth. If it was by accident, if it was on purpose, it's just what you used. Okay. Now, the mission here could have said to us, we, we've learned before that, for example, if you damage a shore that belongs to Hektish, you are exempt from payments. The mission does not does not teach us this halacha in, in terms of shor. How does it teach us this halacha? It teaches us in terms of um of me, I'm sorry, not in terms of hektish, but in terms of me'ilah. Even though those things are typically associated. Typically, when you talk about hektish, we said there's two types of hektish. There's what we call kachim and kabayas and 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 is mizbeach, temple fund temple fund money plus um, sacrifices. Now, typically speaking, both of those categories have me'ilah. But the mission doesn't use the word hektish. The mission instead uses the word me'ilah. <clears throat> me'ilah hudalespo, ha'mekdish kachi. But it seems to be that the mission is referring to an animal that is sanctified. So if it's a sanctified animal, but it does not have me'ilah, then you would be liable for damages. It's only where there is me'ilah, that's when you're exempt from penalty, from damages. In other words, if your, your ox gores another ox, if the if the misappropriation of this ox constitutes me'ilah, you're exempt from payment. If not, if it does if it if it does not constitute me'ilah, 
either because it's a regular person's, it doesn't belong to Hektish, or even if it is a sacrifice, but this is the type of sacrifice that doesn't have me'ila, you're still exempt, you're, you're, you are liable for damages. Okay, what's an example of this? Mantana, who is the author of the Mishnah, we're talking here about lower level kachim. These are sacrifices that you're you're allowed to eat. For example, a good example of this is a carbon shlomim or a carbon pesach, the kachim kalim. According to the opinion of Rabbi Zaglili, the Amar Moment Bailam, who he says they belong to, uh, they belong to the owner. The Tanya we learned, Umola Mo Bashem, Rabbi's kachim kalim shehein mimaynei. One second. Okay. In other words, we're talking here about a, this verse is talking about a watchman. I gave you my animal to watch, and it says which is an odd terminology. And you sort of abused God. Now, if it's my ox, you abuse me, not God. It says, it must be it's possible to have a godly item in my possession that you can abuse. What? How is that possible? A, a, a sacrifice like a shlom. A carbon shlomim you abuse God because it's a sacrifice, but you're still liable to pay like a regular watchman. That's an exempt, an exempt and so there's no me'ila, but yet you're yet it's still considered it, it's still sanctified. So says in second, let's say a kayan takes a portion of his of his of the sacrifice that he's allowed to eat. Whether it's kachim kalim or it's kachim kachim, and he's and he, and he gives it to a woman for kedushin, so the kedushin is not valid. This seems to be not like the opinion of of Rabbi Yisaglili. Rabbi Yisaglili would say that in this scenario, you do own the kachim kalim, you do own the sacrifice. So why can't you give it as a gift to or, or to a woman for kedushin? So Gemara says no. I feel Rabbi Yisaglili. This could also be going according to the opinion of Rabbi Yisaglili. Okay, so what we're saying here is a fundamental distinction. When the animal is alive, it's considered the owner's. Once the animal dies and the Kohen gets a portion of the animal, that portion we say is Mishok and Gavai. It's a godly gift. And therefore, it doesn't belong to the Kohen, it belongs to God. It doesn't own and he can't give Kedushan. Before the animal is sacrificed, it belongs to the owner. Once the animal is sacrificed, it doesn't belong to the owner anymore. It's considered a godly possession. Correct. Yeah, yeah. Correct. So we say that Mishul Kavai literally means they're eating from God's table. So it belongs to God and they're eating at God's table. You don't give me the food when I come to your house. I let you eat my food. Okay. Um... Okay. Have a great day. It's Kodesh.